tuberous sclerosis is what I will discuss in this video and tuberous sclerosis is essentially a genetic disorder it's autosomal dominant and it essentially involves tumors in multiple organs and those tumors are given a special name they're called hematomas and hematomas are uh, benign tumors that are essentially a mixture of uh, various cells. Now these hematomas or uh, tuberous sclerosis can involve various parts of the body. It can involve the skin, the lungs, kidneys, eyes, heart, and brain. So as you can see it's pretty significant. So let's get into the symptomatology and in particular let's talk about what kind of things will be um, presented in a clinical vignette that you can uh, see uh, to further figure out that is tuberous sclerosis. Well, the very first skin problem that I wanted to definitely emphasize is one that is described as hyperpigmented ash leaf-shaped macules. And I encourage you to look these up on the internet to see what they look like. Now these will be found on the trunk and sometimes also in the extremities. The other type of skin uh, condition that's very common in tuberous sclerosis is known as angiofibromas. And these are given a special name actually. They're called adenoma sebation. And if you type in adenoma sebation, you will definitely get a very characteristic photo. And I'll draw it. Basically what you have is these tiny papules that appear on the face very close to the nose and on the cheeks. And as a result, they're described as multiple small papules. And they're very characteristic for tuberous sclerosis. There's a few other organs that I need to discuss. There's kidney, there's heart, and then there's brain. The kidney involvement will lead to renal failure, and it can also lead to high blood pressure and sometimes to hematuria. If you have uh, these tumors in the heart, that can lead to heart failure. And to close off the symptoms, I really want to emphasize the brain because seizures are a big part of the presentation of tuberous sclerosis especially on the licensing exams typically you'll have a patient with seizures who also upon physical exam will have some of the characteristic skin findings and that will guide you to this diagnosis so how do you diagnose it essentially a difficult diagnosis a lot of this based on clinical symptoms but if you ever are suspicious then you have to do some imaging. And imaging studies, of course, include ultrasound, MRI, um, X-ray of the head sometimes if you feel that there's uh, any kind of CNS involvement, in particular those tubers that can exist in the central nervous system as a result of tuberous sclerosis. There's also specific genetic testing that's available because 85% of people with tuberous sclerosis will have a mutation in a specific gene, and that gene is TSC1, TS for tuberous sclerosis, and that test is definitely available. In terms of treatment, really, it's really specific to each individual problem. For example, if the person has seizures, you have to manage that with anti-seizure medication. If the person has skin uh, problems, such as those papules I described, you have to do a specific uh, treatment for that. Each problem has to be identified and treated specifically. But there is one drug that kind of is a catch-all, and it's called Everolimus. And what this drug does is it inhibits the tumor growth and proliferation. So now let's take a crack at a few vignettes, see if we can figure this out. 10-year-old boy, the history of epilepsy and mental retardation is brought to the specialty clinic for evaluation. Physical exams are remarkable for several ovoid hypopigmented areas on the trunk and large numbers of red and yellow papules on the face, particularly near the mouth. Biopsy of the papules demonstrates 
angiofibromata. This patient is mo most likely to have which of the following CNS pathologies. So he's got epilepsy, he's got these papules on his face and these hyperpigmented areas. We don't know that it's tuberous sclerosis, but it could be. So tuberous sclerosis involves certain tumors and they're given a special name, they're called hematomas. So that's what the answer is to this question. And next one, the young mother brings her three-year-old daughter to the clinic because of worsening acne problems on the daughter's face. She had a normal birth without complications. However, she is developmentally slow and has had few episodes of seizures of unknown etiology. Medications include phenytoin and a multivitamin. Child is playful and her size and weight are appropriate for her age. She has numerous firm flesh-colored papules scattered over her nose, both cheeks, and chin. There are no pustules or inflammatory papules. She also has multiple small hypopigmented ash leaf and confetti-type macules on both lower extremities. The rest of her exam is unremarkable. Most appropriate next step is, again, very similar, a, a child with seizures and some very characteristic uh, skin findings makes me think of tuberous sclerosis. And the first step in the diagnostic process is doing some sort of imaging of the organs. And I would probably, because she's got seizures, uh, look at the head first. So x-ray of the skull would probably be an appropriate choice. And finally, the mentally challenged 18-year-old man has been calmly walking down the street, suddenly cried out, fell to the ground, started having jerky movements of his right arm and leg, accompanied by twitching of the face. Passers-by stopped to help and noticed that he was frothing from the mouth and had wet trousers and had bitten his tongue. Paramedics were called and they swiftly transported him to the emergency room. Tending physician noticed that he had small, firm swellings around the face as well as freckle-like dark spots on his face. Clinical condition affecting this patient can result in development of which of the following conditions? Well, this is a very difficult question. They don't give you much. This jerky movements and all this that he had is probably a seizure. And then all of these things that the physician is noticing on this face is also some sort of tuberous sclerosis associated skin abnormality. Now they're asking, what other problem can he have? Well, of the choices listed, tuberous sclerosis can affect the kidney. And if you do affect the kidney, uh, it can result in renal failure. So quite difficult question, but the answer is C.